Hi all, Brennan Boudreau with Hoosier Gun Rights. I'm on my way to Indianapolis right now. I just want to provide you all with a quick update on House Bill 1369, uh, which is a so-called constitutional carry bill um, that is uh, working its way through the House of Representatives right now. Um, as you've been following our Facebook page, you know that uh, that generally speaking, uh, that we we support the uh, the newfound um, uh, support for constitutional carry in the Indiana House of Representatives. We're very thankful that that uh, Republican leadership is finally seeing that constitutional carry is a good issue, and that uh, gun owners support it. Um, bad news is that uh, they are seemingly tone deaf to. Uh, to the concerns of gun owners that uh, that have uh, that we've expressed uh, on your behalf that uh, that are in House Bill 1369, um, you know, so please help us out here, take action, let them know that you support constitutional carry, and you don't want this extra garbage put in the bill. Uh, you you certainly don't want uh, government agencies creating new databases without legislative oversight. As you know. There are three main issues that we have with House Bill 1369 as it passed out of the Public Policy Committee. Um, you know, as as you know, you know, constitutional carry is a simple idea. It simply says that if you have the the right to possess a handgun, you should be able to carry it openly or concealed uh, without a without a permit. And uh, 1369 does this pretty well. There are a couple problems, though. Um, number one, uh, as we've been pounding away on this. Uh, for the last uh, last few weeks here, is that House Bill 1369 does not remove the permit requirement to carry on land managed by the Department of Natural Resources. That's where we have a problem with the bill, where it changes the name of the of the carry permit to a reciprocity permit, which is just not accurate, uh, because a permit would still have to be required to carry on DNR property. Um, this this is an issue. Um, you know, we believe that in a constitutional carry bill. Uh, and and constitutional constitutional carry law, if you are allowed to carry there with a permit, you should be able to carry there uh, with uh, without a permit, um, barring any federal restrictions on it. Obviously, um, so it's just um, you know we thought it was unintentional. Now we're thinking that it was by design, unfortunately, by Representative Smaltz to leave the DNR out. Um, you know, regardless of the motives behind it, it needs to get fixed um, if if we want to get this done correctly. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is uh, the original effective date of House Bill 1369 was July 1st, 2021, which was reasonable. We'd, we'd prefer effective immediately considering all the delays that have been happening in Indiana uh, due to uh, the excuse of COVID uh, with permit processing. And the public policy committee hearing last week, we heard testimony from several folks that the, uh, the hearing, or excuse me, the uh, the turnaround time on permits has quadrupled. The Indiana State Police Superintendent said that it takes five to seven days, whereas most people who are testifying said that it's taking at least a month for people to get their permits. Um, so in an ill-advised decision, Representative Smaltz decided to punt uh, the effective date of, of constitutional carry to March of next year, um, which is just unbelievably absurd considering that Several committee members, including Representative Smaltz, stressed concern about how long it was taking for people to have their permits processed. And it's, it's frustrating that there are now people uh, on the Internet who are, uh, who, who, you know, are proponents of constitutional carry, are proponents of the bill, who are saying that, uh, that you know, we are, we are throwing a, a, a fit over the effective date of waiting until March of 2022 when many of those same voices were the ones who were complaining uh, about the current permitting process taking upwards of a month to turn around or permit. Um, so I, I don't know what side they're on. Uh, they seem confused, and it'd be nice if they would get on the same page with gun owners who believe this should be uh, put in effect this year, uh, no later than July of 2021. Now, the reason why the effective date was punted to March of next year is that Representative Smaltz wants to give law enforcement agencies uh, the, the time to develop a database to quote unquote keep the gun keep guns out of the hands of bad guys now it, it all sounds well and good um, and what he was p saying he was going to do in his bill was just ask law enforcement agencies in Indiana State Police etc 
to uh, propose recommendations to the General Assembly to, uh, for the General Assembly to then act on. Um, you know, while this gave us great pause, we were willing to say, okay, if you're just going to ask them to make recommendations, we'll, we'll see what comes out of that. The problem is, is that that's not what he actually put in the bill. Uh, Section 22 of House Bill 1369 says that the, the state agencies involved must develop a system to provide this information without legislative oversight. Yeah, it has some pretty language in there that has to follow state and federal law and constitutional requirements, um, but there's there's no legislative oversight. The, the state agencies just get to create whatever database, whatever system they want, without any legislative oversight. And we can't say that, oh, well, they, it says that they have to follow the Constitution, therefore they will. Come on, Indiana's a red flag law that allows gun rights to be stripped without due process. So that doesn't give me much confidence. Our concern is that by giving uh, these government agents uh, carte blanche authority uh, to to come up with a, a system to quote-unquote give prohibited persons information to law enforcement officials is that there's no oversight. And not only that, there are all sorts of due process issues, all sorts of civil liberty issues. And as the Indiana State Police Superintendent stated in his testimony, there are privacy issues as well. Um, you know, and, and so we just have all sorts of concerns because the, the federal prohibited persons list um, is, is full of people who have no business being on the list in the first place. Uh, they've either ended up there because of, uh, um, you know, them having a, a bureaucrat fat finger a name, uh, and then they get put on the, on the, on the list. Or perhaps it's, um, you know, they, from the Obama administration, adding Social Security recipients or veterans to the prohibited persons list without due process, uh, just because they, they meet certain requirements in their minds of not having the legal right to keep and bear arms. So those are all sorts of concerns to us. And not only that, it's, it's not even being billed accurately. Um, you know, the, some of the talking heads out there are saying, well, this doesn't, this doesn't create authorization. This, this just creates a report. That's not what the bill says. It does not ask law enforcement agencies to, uh, to come up with a report. It, it gives them the authority to do whatever they need to, to create this system, to give law enforcement, uh, this quote unquote information that they need. Um, and that's all sorts of problems. I mean, our, our biggest concern is that every traffic stop is all of a sudden going to come with a criminal background check on you um, uh, because of the system that they create. Because there's, there's really no confines on what, what they can do. So that's why we're putting the pressure on the General Assembly, on the House, uh, House leadership and House Republicans in general, the whole House, to fix these issues. And also, let's make this bill effective this year. And also make sure that constitutional carry expands and extends to DNR property as well. Um, you know, I don't know what's going to come of it. We're expecting it to be on second reading tomorrow. We're working with uh, some legislative allies to possibly offer some am amendments to fix the bill. Um, we're hoping that they're just going to get the message and fix the bill outright. But we're also ready to hold those accountable who uh, who added this garbage in the bill in the first place. Um, you know, why... why 18 other states now can pass constitutional carry without having to create these these databases or or kicking out the effective date to over a year away and but it can't be done in indiana is beyond me they're making excuses they're trying to placate anti-gun lobbyists and special special interests uh rather than listening to you um so i i will not have any of it that uh you are to blame for uh for the condition of 1369 and the, the situation that Representative Smaltz and his allies have made. Rather, it is on them for not passing a clean bill. So keep up the good fight. With your help, we will get this done uh, one way or another. Um, I'll keep you posted. Thank you again for all your activism. You are clearly making a difference. They are feeling the heat. Let's turn it up even more. Thank you.